Hey folks, Nick Colbertson here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a 3D Minecraft diamond using Blender. The principles of this video can be applied for creating any pixel art in Blender, and the reason I decided to stick with the diamond is because it has a little bit of transparency and it shows up a little bit more of the depth. Um, and also I just like Minecraft. So this is what the finished product's going to look like. Now if you haven't heard of Blender, it's a free 3D modeling program and you can do tons and tons of stuff with it. Uh, but we're just going to scratch the surface in this video and do a little animation stuff and work with uh, creating this pixel art. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download a image of a Minecraft diamond. Uh, just Google something like Minecraft Diamond PNG. The reason you want a PNG file is because it has the transparency around the sides, so you just have the image. All right, now let's go ahead and open up Blender. First thing we want to do is take this square, the starting square, and let's click on the Object tab over here. And I'm going to scale it down to 0.5. All right, and uh, next thing we want to do is select view, and we want to go to the orthoscopic view and view it from the right. Okay, and the reason that we chose orthoscopic view is because we're going to be using that image that you just downloaded as a background reference of where the pixels go. All right, so now we want to pull up the properties over on the side. You can do that by either clicking view properties here or you can just hit N key. All right, now let's click on background images, add image, open, and it's on our desktop diamond pick. Okay, to get this usable size, we first want to change the opacity to one and then we want to scale it up to where every one of the pixels will go into one of these squares. Okay, so let's go ahead and scale this up. It doesn't have to be exact because we're just using it as a reference. I think it needs to go to that one. Okay, and uh, then I'm just going to move it the y-axis. There we go. So now we have uh, every color is in a corresponding block for the pixel. And we can go ahead and drag this one around by clicking it and dragging. And if you hold down control while you drag, it'll snap it to uh, a particular pixel. So I'm actually going to start here on the outside just so I know I'm lined up properly. Okay, so there you go. You have your first pixel in place. And next thing you want to do is duplicate this pixel until you have it covering the entire surface. So to duplicate this, we're going to hit Shift D. Then once you drag around, you have the duplicated cube. And again, after it's duplicated, you want to hit Control so that you can snap it onto a new location. Then finally, click with your mouse and you've laid down the square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for several more. Again, that's Shift D to duplicate, then Control to snap it into location. Okay, at this point, if you want to speed up the process, you can hit B to select a dragged region. So I've now selected all these cubes, and you can do the same duplicate by hitting shift D and drag the new set wherever you want it. Okay, and just hit control so it lines up. So you can see I got a little bit off center here, but that's an easy enough fix. So I'll just hit B again, highlight these, and drag from the center while holding control. And now they're lined up again. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video while I fill in the rest of these cubes.
So now we have our finished diamond shape. And if we want to see the image from before, we can come over here to our properties, move it to the front. So, and just to check, here's our before and after. Now what we want to do is keep our background as a reference image. So I'm just going to slide it to the side. Now we can use this as our color palette and for the placement of the different blocks. All right, so now what we want to do is add color to the blocks. So I'm going to click on the material tab over here. We want to add a new material, click new and click the color here. We're going to do this color selecting tool. And since we're in the top left pixel position, we'll just copy this one. All right, and minus this. So you can see we have our first pixel matching there. Uh, it's a little bit darker because we don't have the lighting set up yet. But after you have this first one set up, what you'll do is hit the B key. And we're going to select all the pixels that are going to have that same color. All right, then let's hit Control L. And this is Make Links Materials. All right, and you want to make sure that whichever cube you've just changed the material is still the one that's highlighted. Uh, and that'll put its material on all of the different cubes you've just selected. So now let's try selecting another material. I've grabbed the cube that's right here. All right, and add new material, new, and let's just match the color again. And subtract that old material. All right, and again, I'm going to go in and highlight all of the different pixels here uh, that have a matching color, and then I'll hit Control L again and apply that. Okay, so I'll speed up again for this. So now we can change out of orthographic view, and here's how our cube looks so far. So it is 3D, but nothing's uh, extruded out yet, so it doesn't have any depth to it yet, and that's what we're going to go ahead and fix now. Uh, now what you can do is group them together, but I want each layer to be a little bit different depth. So I've clicked back over here on our object layer. All right, and let's go ahead, and I'm gonna look at it from this view so we can see how far out we want each of the cubes to actually go. And uh, by to do that, we'll just click on scale for, I believe it's Y, no, it's not Y, X. Yes, so we're just gonna add to the X 1.6. I'll go ahead and round it to 1.6. And uh, now I'm just gonna go sort of eyeballing as I go, just different depths till it, it sort of looks right. This is where you can kind of play around. And to select the cube I want, I'm just right clicking and I come over and give it its scale size. Then I can use two fingers. I'm using a trackpad to uh, scroll around and get a new view of it.
All right, so now I'm happy with how the diamond looks. What I'm gonna do is move the camera around to be uh, right in front of it, and I'm just gonna make a little animation of it spinning side to side, uh, basically just with a couple of keyframes of moving this around 360 degrees and spinning as I back the camera out. So I'll go ahead and set that up and then uh, talk you through what I did. Okay, so here's a quick view from the camera looking at the diamond before I've added transparency to anything and also I haven't put the light exactly where I want it. But under the object tab, I've set the location of the camera at X40, Y0, Z0, X90 degrees, Y0 degrees, and Z90 degrees. All right, and... Uh... So that's actually the ending point of where I want the camera to be, but the camera's going to start inside of the diamond and then back out to that location. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a keyframe here at 100. And we do that by moving to 100 and then going up here and pushing I for location rotation. Then I'll move back to our start frame, and I'm going to put the camera at X0. Hit I again, and location, rotation, scale. All you're really changing is the location, but I, I use location, rotation, scale each time. So uh, this isn't from the camera view, but if we play it, you can see the camera coming back. All right, so this is what we have so far, uh, just the camera moving. And I'm kind of happy with that speed, but the diamond will be spinning around. Now, for our final animation, what we want to do is join all the layers of our diamond. That way we can just have it spinning as the camera goes out. To do that, I'm going to select all the cubes. I'm just going to move this spotlight out of the way for a second. Then hit B and drag over all the areas of the cube. Now you see we have them all selected. Then I'm just going to hit Control J and we've now joined them all into one layer. So now we want to get this origin point to the center of this object. To do that, just click Origin here on the left-hand side, and Origin to Geometry. All right, there we go. And now whenever we spin it around, it'll spin on this center axis. So now go to the first frame, hit I, Location, Rotation, Scale, and we'll have it spin all the way around and we are rotating on the z-axis. So I'll go ahead and put it at 180 degrees. Hit I, location, rotation, scale. And I'm going to move another 20 blocks and do the same thing. Only this time it will be 360. I'll do another, I'll do 540. Then finally it'll slow down here at, we'll say about 95, and we'll put it at 720. And let's view our animation. All right, and the last thing we want to do is add in a background and sort of change some of the opacity of the different cubes. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of transparency to what we're using. So we're going back over to the material tabs and now you'll see that all the materials are joined together. So what I'm going to do is just toggle between each one and add this transparency here and we'll probably put it around 50%. In addition to changing transparency, I also want to put emit up a little bit so it looks like the individual blocks are kind of glowing. And I'll put that up around 0.2. For some of these darker layers, I've decided to come back in now and change this emit to zero and raise the alpha back up to about 75. So here's our final rendered out animation of our Minecraft diamond. 
Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. For yours, you might want to try and make it a little bit deeper to have even more of those pits and valleys, uh, making it look like a little more textured. Uh, and you will notice in the background I added in just a black sky and some stars. And th those little particle effects are built into the little world setting on the right-hand side in Blender. So you can toy around with that. Probably not a final look you'd want to have, but it's a good way to create atmosphere kind of quickly. So thanks for watching the video. Rate, comment, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see some more of these tutorials because I like making them. Uh, and good luck making your own pixel art in Blender.